Okay, so we're going to move on to the longer questions now, section B. Um, so we start off with ammonia, uh, and it's telling me that it is a gas with covalent bonded molecules, yep. Show the electronic configuration of a nitrogen atom using the electron in boxes. Well, if you look at the periodic table, uh, nitrogen has of course got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, protons, so seven electrons. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is of course the 2s and this would be the 2p subshell. Ammonia can be made from the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen in the harbour process. Oh, we all know and love that one. What, is the, what effect will increase the temperature have on the composition of the equilibrium and on the value of the equilibrium constant? Okay, well, if you have a look here, the forward reaction is exothermic. So if you increase the temperature, um, that will make the reaction go in the endothermic direction. So it will go backwards. So the yield will be less. So I will have more N2 and H2O, and I will have less ammonia um, because it will go in the endothermic direction, which is that one. Um, so how will that affect on Kc? Well, Kc, you know, is products over reactants. So products is less, so that's getting smaller. I'm getting more reactants, that's getting larger. So Kc will become smaller, it will decrease. Okay, so moving on to part C then. Um, and we've got to calculate uh, K. P um, now. So it's given me uh, the moles um, at equilibrium um, and at the beginning. So it told me I started off with 0.5 moles of nitrogen, 0.45 moles of hydrogen, no ammonia at all. Equilibrium, I've got 0.4 of that, so I've lost 0.05 of nitrogen. For every one of those, I react three of those, so it must mean that's gone down by 0.15, so I'm left with 0.300 moles of that. For every one of those, I make two of those, so that's two times 0.05, which is 0.1, so I've got 0.1 moles of ammonia. Okay. So, I now need to calculate my partial pressures, which is the pressure of each gas over the total, um, sorry, the moles of each gas over the total number of moles. So let's do that. So for nitrogen, it's 0 0.400. If we add all these up together, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0 0.1, we get to 0 0.8. And the pressure, it's told me, is 500 kilopascals. This is going to be 0.3 over 0.8 times 500, and this will be 0.1 over 0.8 times 500 for the partial pressures. That comes to 250, that comes to 187.5, um, and finally this comes to 62.5. Then Kp, as you know, is going to be the partial pressure of ammonia squared divided by the partial pressure of nitrogen times the partial pressure of hydrogen cubed. If you do that, it's going to be uh, ammonia is of course 62.5 squared times nitrogen, which is 0 0.4 times by, uh, no, it's not, times by nitrogen, which is 250 times by hydrogen, which is 187.5 cubed. If you do all of that, work it out, you will find that Kp is 2.36 times 10 to the minus six, and the units are kilopascals to the minus two. Okay, so moving on then um, to part D. The chemical company receives an order to supply 1.96 times 10 to the 10 decimeters cubed of ammonia. Um, the whole process is 95% yield. 
calculate the mass of hydrogen in tonnes required. So first of all, let's work out the moles of ammonia that they require. And that is going to be 1.96 times 10 to the 10 divided by 24. Uh, because they told me room temperature and pressure, we know that one mole of any gas has a volume of 24 decimeters cubed. And that comes to 8.167 times 10 to the 8 moles. It's a 95% yield. So I need to scale that up. So um, I take the 8.167 times 10 to the 8, and I times it by 100 over 95 to get me 8.60 times 10 to the 8 moles. So the moles of hydrogen that I need to start with to make that is going to be that number, 8.60 times 10 to the 8, divided by 2 times by 3 for the moles of hydrogen, 3H2, and that comes to 1.289 times 10 to the 9 moles. Um, and then uh, finally, I need to times that by 2. So mass of H2 is going to be moles times molar mass, and for hydrogen, of course, that's 2. Um, and then divide by uh, 1 times 10 to the 6 to convert it to tons, and that will give me 2580 tons. So 2580 tons. So just to go over that, so I took that number, I times by 2 to, for, to convert it into grams, and then I divide it by 1 times 10 to 6 to convert it into tons. Right, okay, part E. Hydrogen uses rocket fuel, uh, reaction of ammonia with sodium chloride 1, two other products of one equation. So hydrogen, hydrazine, N2H4. What's going to be the formula of sodium chloride 1? Well, remember the 1 tells you the oxidation state of chlorine. It's chlorate, so it must have an oxygen in. It's got a minus charge, um, and then that would mean that chlorine is in the oxidation state of plus 1. Oxygen is minus 2 to give me a charge of minus 1 overall. So the formula is Na of sodium chlorate 1 is NaClO. Um, oh, sorry, that should be a 2NH3 plus sodium chlorate gives me hydrogen N2H4. Um, and what else am I going to make? Well, uh, it tells me uh, two other products. Um, I haven't used any sodium or chlorine, so plus sodium chloride. I've still got oxygens and some hydrogens looking around, so plus H2O as well. Um, and then I've got my two ammonia um, there, and it's balanced. Using the electron pair repulsion theory, draw a 3D diagram of a molecule of hydrazine. Predict the N H um, H N H bond angle um, around the nitrogen atom. Okay, so we've got an N there. Let's go for so we're just basically drawing ammonia with this. There's my lone pair, but then that will be my bond to the nitrogen there. Um, let's put my lone pair there, which means that this is going to go up and H like so. And the bond angle is, of course, 107 degrees uh, because I've got three bonding pairs, one lone pair.